This is Paul, yeah. Uh, you know, just looking at these inalienable rights, mm -hmm. not subject to alienation, separation, mm -hmm. characteristics of those things that cannot be bought or sold or transferred from one person to another, yeah, rivers and public highways and certain personal rights, liberty, mm -hmm. inalienable, incapable of being aliened, mm -hmm. Now, I didn't really understand the meaning of unalienable rights. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, rights are defined generally as powers of free action, and the primal rights pertaining to men and women are undoubtedly mm -hmm, enjoyed by human beings purely as such, uh -huh, being grounded in personality and, is it, and existing anteced, antecedently. Yeah to the recognition by positive law, free, mm -hmm. not subject to legal constraint of another, yeah, unconstrained, having power to follow the dictates of his own will, mm -hmm. not subject uh, to the dominion of another, yeah, not compelled to involuntary servitude used in this sense as opposed to slave, yeah. Now, this Bill of Rights, five essential powers required to control your destiny, mm -hmm. The 20 essential unalienable rights, if taught to our children and exercise, would result mm -hmm, in domestic tranquility and control of individuals and national destiny. Yeah. Now, uh, religion, speech, press, and uh, symbol, redress of grievances. Mm -hmm. There's a spiritual power, amendment number one. Amendment number two. Uh-huh. Uh, is the militia, bear arms, be secure, yeah. self-defense of destiny, mm -hmm. and then uh, grand jury, self-governing power of destiny, amendment number four, yeah. to not answer, due process, speedy and public trial, impartial jury, amendment number six, mm -hmm. confront witnesses, assistance of counsel, trial by jury, uh -huh. Judicial power of destiny, amendment number seven. Mm -hmm. Common law, excessive bail and fines and cruel punishments, Pro amendment number eight. Uh -huh. Now, this is kind of good because it talks about these 20 unalienable rights. Yes. And um, there's the right to exercise rights. Uh -huh. Sharer versus colon. There can be no sanction or penalty imposed upon one because of his exercise of constitutional rights. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to exercise those constitutional rights. Well, I'm going to sue you for that. <laughs> then there's the Simmons versus the United States. The claim and exercise of a constitutional right uh -huh, cannot be converted into a crime. A denial of them would be a denial of due process of law. Yes. Now, you've said my 2 million, uh -huh, 260,000 emails, um, you converted it to the crime of cyber-stalking, pooch. I think I can use Simmons versus the United States as the president for the lawsuit right now. Mm -hmm. You cannot say it's cyber-stalking uh, to a third party that happened to be uh, an employee of a school district because my wife's an employee. Yes. <laughs> where I document forgery, fraud, and misrepresentation, as well as kidnapping and child abduction. Now, rights indirectly denied, go million versus Lightfoot. Constitutional rights would be of little value if they could be indirectly denied. Yes. Now, obviously, when you issue protection orders without jurisdiction of law, you're indirectly denying me the right to due process. I think I can sue you for that one. <laughs> And rights are not a crime. Yeah. Miller versus the U.S. Yeah. The claim and exercise of a constitutional right cannot be converted into a crime. Yeah. Uh, Simmon versus U.S. We find it intolerable that one constitutional right uh -huh, should have to be surrendered in order to assert another. Mm. Miranda versus Arizona, where rights secured by the Constitution are involved, there can be no rulemaking or legislation mm -hmm, which would abrogate them. Then stuck versus medical event, one challenge, jurisdiction cannot be assumed, it must be proved to exist. Yes. 
Now, you said you have the jurisdiction to issue that criminal complaint. Oh, I said you did not have authority of jurisdiction. I think I could use Duck versus medical examiners. That I can prove that your jurisdiction did not exist. It was assumed. Yeah. You didn't have the jurisdiction to issue the protection order in 2011 because we weren't residents. Yes. You did not have the jurisdiction to reissue it in 2012 because I was on trial for the previous uh, protection order. You didn't. Yes. You didn't have jurisdiction when you issued it after 48 days. Ouch. I think stuck versus medical examiners will be applicable for each of the arrests. Ouch. And as well as each of the coroners now right to practice law. <laughs> It seems that the American Bar Association that was founded in August 21st of 1878, yep, it's a voluntary association of lawyers and was incorporated in 1909 in the state of Illinois. Yeah. Now, this is somewhat interesting. Mm -hmm. Could you get me their actual uh, states of incorporation, mm -hmm. the amount of money they pay for the right to uh, exist as an association because it is a bar association? <laughs> And the approximate number of all fees that they've collected since incorporating in the state of Illinois in 1909, <laughs> approximately 109 years from now. I'd like to know <laughs> how good I have to sue you for that. <laughs> now, the state mm -hmm. does not accredit the law schools <laughs> or hold examination, has no control over jurisdiction over the ABA or its members. Yeah. The ABA accredits all law schools. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say I did have the legal right to sue the American Bar Association because I've emailed them. Yes, yes. And I sued them for every fee that's ever been paid. Pow, pooch. Then I sued to have them removed from their individual states of incorporation mm -hmm. so that no one could accredit the law schools of the United States of America.